Isn't he too slow for centre, though? And he's not big enough to be a second. He's, he's big enough to be a second row. Oh. It, 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 Tony Smith in those structures, giving him you know a spell off the bench or whatever, got the best out of him in the back row. I think so. Bradford I, have played him wherever he's been needed because you've. Not he's really normally had. more a centre. I saw him deployed at centre when he was at Warrington as well. So it's not something that we've just created out of nowhere. No, no, he's played centre before, but I think Tony Smith was adapting him into a back rower and then Bradford, because of a dearth of any sort of playmaking players in any position, like three, four, six, seven, kind of forced it. To mm. think, right, well, we'll just put whatever play we've got with Super League experience in the centres because that'll work. It, it was some of the genius personnel decisions that have gone on in the Bronc- at the Bulls in the last 18 months or so, I would, I would argue. Well, we, we've had him for three years, so he was there for 18 months prior. Yeah, he was injured. Was for... oh, he's been injured a lot. Yeah, that's the other side of it. He's a bit of a sick now. Look, I don't mind the guy, and he seems like a nice bloke, and I've met him and had a very brief chat with him, and he was thoroughly pleasant and all that lot, but he's not cracking that warrant inside if everybody's fit no but he's a good addition to the squad that they know what they're getting in terms of he's not going to cost them a lot of money and when you're paying your big money to you're going to have you've just got Hughes on a new deal Curry's going to be even probably going to be getting re-upped again soon even though he's on a relatively new deal yeah Westerman's going nowhere yeah and whilst West was tailing off I'm, I'm sure they've not I'm sure his contract isn't pittance no and he's just the extra body to fill that gap because yeah. maybe they don't think some of the young younger players, people like Philbin, maybe could be going. Mm. Um, Lathwaite's already going to Toronto. Yep. Um, Sam Wiles probably not quite ready yet and probably would be better off served with a loan spell in the championship next year. Yep. And these are the decisions that they're making for that for that sort of a deal, I think. And I think it's a stopgap yeah. before some of the other players are ready to come into the side. Yeah, and Tony Smith's done well with players like this in the past when he brought Kevin Penny back in, for instance, as well. Yeah. There's, there's echoes of that, isn't there? So, yeah, let's see how it'll turn him into a world beater now. I've slagged him off, but we'll see. Jamie uh, Lyon was 23 when okay. he um, so sort of signed for St Helens by the way I didn't know because I didn't watch the Manly game at the weekend but he's injured now and uh, that's his is that player's him? last game yeah the DL. Well, like lot, Pat lot, Richards. a lot of people doing that isn't there yeah, yeah. Whitehaven have sacked their head coach James Coyle. Coyle joined the club in 2015 but left hate with Haven bottom of the championship on 11 points with just 5 wins from their 25 games this season. Whitehaven released this statement. To all concerned, unfortunately the board of directors have decided that due to recent circumstances we are left with no option but to relieve head coach James Coyle of his duties with immediate effect. We wish James all the best in the future. Inevitable, I think. Yeah. The slide they were on. Mm. Um, yeah. That they needed something to change there. And I think that maybe this the statement the that Coyle was going to be it? leaving anyway at the end of the year mm. kind of coincided with a downturn in form anyway. So they needed. So, yeah. so it was obvious that this wasn't the guy to motivate that group of players again yeah. at this stage. Um, talk of that he might be. Is it a Barrow next year? Possibly. Um, so. So yeah, I think maybe his head and heart maybe wasn't in it anymore so much and yeah. the the replacement needed to happen for the club to stand any slim chance of saviour. Well, that's it. Four weeks to go in the season. They've got to make up four points on Oldham to stand a chance. Well, Swinton are the ones. Swinton, to forgive me. But we'll, yeah, we'll give some of those numbers a bit more mm. later on when we go through the results roundup. Okay, uh, Toronto have signed the young Hull FC scrum half Reese Dean for 2017. Uh, Reese Dean is 19, that rhymes, and has already spent the better part of three years with the Hull FC first team. I'm looking forward to getting the opportunity to represent the Toronto Wolfpack, and I cannot wait to get out to Canada and get started, Dean said. Yeah, great opportunity for a young man of his age to go and broaden his horizons and play rugby league in a different country and experience this exciting new thing. Yeah, a, a little bit of a question mark over the recruitment of Toronto in that this is the fourth or fifth half pack we've been talking about. So I assume they're going to play Gary Wheeler in the centres. Mm. I assume... The well, no, they're not. Piece. Gary Wheeler's... I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Right him off. <laughs> Gary Wheeler's there as like, you know, he's good for social reasons, I, I, I guess. I assume Reese Jacks is going to play in, in, in hooker, maybe. I don't know. But I just think they've... <laughs> They seem to have signed a lot of players, but what they have addressed is mm. those those key positions with talented individuals, I suppose. And he has got a lot of talent. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him wearing black and white again in the future. Yeah. Um, 
because they put a lot of time into him, they know a lot about him. I think mm. the fans were quite excited about him for a while um, yeah. in the reserves and that sort of level. It's just he he needs to start playing now at some sort of level full time for yeah. you know playing against bloke like yeah. real blokes. Yeah, and that's he, what he'll get to do. Big nasty open age players. That's what he needs in it, and that'll toughen him up a touch. And Definitely, certainly do his development uh, no harm. And finally, Hunslet Hawks supporters have voted to rebrand the club as Hunslet RLFC and drop the Hawks moniker. Uh, the result of the vote was 83% of supporters voting in favour of renaming the club. Hunslet Hawks, uh, or soon to be Hunslet RLFC, General Manager Martin Flynn said, the number of supporters who took the time to vote far exceeded our expectations and underlined the passion our supporters have for this great club. The result of the vote has shown that overwhelmingly our fans across all generations wish the club to be called Hunslet RLFC. The next stage of the rebranding exercise will be to invite fans to vote on the new club crest and this will take place at the final home game of the 2016 season against Toulouse on the 3rd of September. Interesting stuff. What I think maybe part of the decision might have been is they needed to buy a new costume for the mascot because obviously the one that they've been wearing this year doesn't fit the mascot <laughs> at all from our experience of yeah. it anyway yeah. and um, and I think that oh, they're just it's just a cost cut measure no in all seriousness I, I just don't get it I just don't get why this has been decided Wakefield have, have done it as well and it surprises me I think it's a bit strange but their nickname I suppose we've always felt a little bit forced and they're still going to retain it for the purposes of the, the youngsters, the youngsters and, and, and stuff, and there's still kids, definitely yeah. going to be a link in there, and maybe it'll return us a thing maybe. in the future. You never know. It's not. It's not a complete cut off. Right. Ties here. What? How is the Hunslet RLC brand going to be any stronger than the Hunslet Hawks brand? It's not going to, in my view. Mm-hmm. And what this is is probably there are a lot. They're amazed by the amount of people who voted, probably because half of them. Uh, are old blokes who don't go to the club anymore because they just sit at home moaning about the club it once was. You don't and, know that. And uh, but have got the local paper and decided to jot down the little opinion about this is ridiculous. This orc stuff. You don't know that. <laughs> but uh, but I'm just I'm, maybe. I just think. It's, you know what? I'm surprised at you a little bit because I would have thought that you would be all for a certain element, a certain amount of tradition, and. This is a harmless thing for me. I don't particularly care. But maybe the fans of Hunslet Rugby League Football Club didn't particularly want to go down this whole kind of Americanised rebranding route. And maybe they're very proud to call it Hunslet RLFC. And maybe that is is something that's important to them. And maybe that's what they voted for. I, I don't have a big objection to call this. It, you can still call it that. I don't mind a rebranding that changed a crest to a more traditional crest. Right. I just don't see the point in getting rid of the Hawks. Well, obviously the supporters have spoken. 83% yeah. oh, yeah. is, is an overwhelming... Yeah, no, and, you know, but backing we, we know that people, when given a choice to make a decision, don't necessarily make a progressive one. Um, <laughs> I am not sitting here and comparing it to anything like that. But I, 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 I'm not comparing it to anything in particular, Tom. I'm just saying this is, this happens. And, yeah. And I think you get people get stuck in this mindset of like changing stuff for the sake of changing stuff. That's not actually going to make any difference. Hums at Rugby League Football Club yeah. are going to make no more money off this. In fact, their opportunities for merchandising reduced. Their opportunities for things to sell things to the children. Reduce. Well, we don't know that they're not going to keep the Hawks idea for selling things to the kids like like Trinity do. Potentially, I suppose. There's, there's that opportunity there for them, and I would be surprised if they didn't utilise that. But I, I quite like the traditional stuff. I was pleased enough when Wakefield went back to being Wakefield Trinity. I like that. That harkens back. It, it, it's like paying homage to your history, and it recognises where you've come from. I quite like that. I like the badge change that was put in the Fleur back on, yeah. but keeping the Wildcats bit. And well, that makes the no badge, sense. No the badge for this year yeah. was was wait, rather than just the one that just said Wildcats yeah. and Lakefield Trinity was in tiny writing and stuff that they had for most of the Super League era. Yeah. The one that they've had for this year, I think, has a very good combination of the two things. Hmm. And, and maybe that's what Hunslet will go for with their new crest. We'll have to wait and see what the new crest is. Well, it's, it's not. Maybe it'll have a hawk on it. I, I don't see why it would. I don't like. I say I don't mind a traditional crest. Hmm. The traditional club. Crest is fine by me. Yeah. 
completely. I just don't. I just think it's. A, I think we're gonna. I think, I think it's a backward disagree. step. I think. We're, I don't think it's a backward step. I like. I like recognizing heritage and and where things have come from. And and you know, I don't think it's going to slow Hunslet down necessarily. It's not going to speed him up either. Recognize where, where are they necessarily going though? Do you know what I mean? No, that's, I, yeah, that's I know, yeah. a spade a spade. Yeah. Where are they abs- Where are they necessarily going? Back up into the championship. Yeah, we, you're right. You're making a good point. We're giving this Maybe. far too much time. I don't even know why I put it on the rundown. I'm. I'm. I, yeah. I like it. Call, call yourselves. Call yourselves under at RLFC. I like that. I think, I think it wouldn't bother me if other clubs did it, to be perfectly frank. It really wouldn't. I, I, I don't mind it. I, I like a bit of, you know, a nod, to, a nod to the history and a nod to where you came from. I don't think it necessarily needs to, to mean that you're not being progressive and that in other areas you're not running your club in a way that grows it. I just, you know, I quite like it. But yeah, the... the... <laughs> The, well, there's, there's not there's, there's nods to the way your club was was run for, for years, and there's going back to something that you don't need anyway. I don't well, know. There you go. It, know. it we'll seems like we're going to agree. agree to disagree, yeah. but I'm quite certain that this will probably divide opinion amongst the listeners as well. So if you've got a, th- a thought on you know the more traditional names or how things have gone, then get in touch with us and let us know because it could form a, an interesting discussion next week. We've only got one game to review. So, yeah. Okay. So feel free to drop us your tweets on that one. Right, that's news from around the world of rugby league. Let's take a look back now at round three of the Super 8s. Okay, so it was the third round of the Super 8s this week, Mark, and we start on Thursday night over at the KCOM Stadium. Nearly 11,000 people were there to watch a pretty abject performance uh, from the Catalan Dragons. Hull FC did all they needed to do. It was a dominant victory, 44 points to nil. In mitigation, the Catalan Dragons were very, very patched up and they were missing some key players and any depth of their squad had been decimated. Desiccated? No. Normally decimated. you say disseminated and I'm like, what are you doing? No, that's handing out, isn't it? Decimated. I caught myself, yeah, decimated yeah. by injury. And um, and then all the different players have been disseminated around the hospital. Um, <laughs> and and Hull, Hull were, you know, in, in a position where they could start resting players and, and, and bringing players off. So as a, as, a, as a sporting spectacle, it was over pretty quickly. It was still good to watch Hull FC be clinical and keep a team to nil. And, you know, that's two games in a row there now where they've not conceded a point. So that's good for their momentum heading into the Challenge Cup final. Um, what did you make of it? It just wasn't really anything. I, wanted, there, wasn't I really. wanted the game to be relevant. I wanted it to be enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't even think Hull played that well again. No, no. Well, that's 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 a theme for me from the weekend, really, for, for two or two or three of the games that we'll be talking about. I think they just got so much more ball mm. than Catalan had yeah. that, it, that they overwhelmed them eventually. Yeah. Uh, you told me something that I didn't realise that Dave Taylor bust his rib. Yeah. During the game, um, I didn't watch the interviews after I, yeah. you know, ran off to the Olympic. Well, look, we've been very keen. On this podcast, and, and people are generally very keen to to put the boot into Dave Taylor, and you know, reasonably so when he you know gouges ah, people's we've eyes. Been, and we've been balanced; we've credited him for the good stuff he does. We have, applauded we him have. For but the a lot of people, a lot of people will you know, will just call him the fat touchy and and what have you. But for any human being to play that amount of rugby league with a bro- look, man, I couldn't watch a game of rugby league on my couch with a broken rib, so. Credit to the guy for playing with one, and he was heavily strapped up, and you know he was obviously in some pretty serious pain towards the end as well. When it was, you could see it being. Yeah, well, his really season's over either up. way, isn't it? Either way, now, yeah, it's, you know, he's injured and he's out yeah. for you know the next. And he might not be able to come back to Catalan next year, depending on depending on how things go for yeah. him. So this could be the end of the fat touchy. Won't fancy uh, being his cellmate, would you? I don't. I don't know. If- I don't know what Australian drug laws are like around possession. Mm. You know, two charges of possession. How how seriously would that get taken? Okay, we'll have to see. Maybe our Australian listeners can let us know. Yeah, but anyway, um, Dave Taylor aside, mm. there was what like one moment where Lucas Albert did a little chip over and chase, yeah. and other than that, but Lucas Albert was playing his trade with Terry Gigo. Oh no, 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 is... no! I'm saying mm. other than that. There was absolutely nothing to get inspired about, really. No, no. in the Catalan side, there was no one, no one organising other players around them, really. Yeah. Um, that'll come for the youngster, and I don't think it'll ever come for Gigo. I think that's why he's been pulled out of the house as his career's progressed. Yeah. Um, 
no one seemed to be that infused. Uh, no. Morgan Escaray seemed like he was just another body on the field yeah, rather what than really going on with that kid. Yeah. Um, and then poor old the person who did seem infused, who did try.